Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. I'm Nick, and in this video I'm finally going to image an object I've always thought was super cool, but I've never had the opportunity for it, the equipment to, to get it done, and uh, finally I've got here the clear skies, even from light polluted Chicago and on a almost full moon night. We're hoping to get it done here. So uh, come on, let's go image the Wizard Nebula. So I was able to get set up tonight a little bit after dark, once the kids were in bed. One overlooked element of a good setup is leveling your tripod. This step simplifies polar alignment. As you turn the altitude and azimuth knobs, you won't find the mount shifting on more than one axis at a time. Good balance is also essential. One of these days I'll mark the spot on my mounting plate so I can at least start off slightly closer with balance to begin with. The all-important polar alignment. If you get this right, a lot of your other problems just go away. An important step for my setup, after polar alignment, I need to return the mount to home position before slewing to the target. I always wait to calibrate guiding until I'm pointed at the intended target, and then I recalibrate any time I change targets. And this is my newest and most favorite accessory, the ZWO Auto Focuser. It makes finding and maintaining focus throughout the night a breeze. And with that, the imaging run is off to a good start. It's about 30 minutes start to finish for setup. Let's head back inside now and investigate the Wizard Nebula. So NGC 7380, that is the open cluster of stars that's within this nebulosity of the Wizard Nebula. One of the reasons I was excited to shoot this object is because I finally got over something that I think a lot of people do with their astrophotography setups. They kind of focus on what they're not able to do um, instead of really focusing on what your setup is capable of. Oftentimes with the Rasa, it's a fairly wide field of view, so you're actually able to take in some amazing large objects. And some of the smaller objects, you know, a lot of the galaxies and even some of these small nebulae, certainly wouldn't say the Wizard Nebula is extremely small, but it definitely doesn't fill the frame. But what I began to realize is there's a lot of nebulosity around it. This view here really doesn't uh, do it justice as far as what exactly is back there behind it. Let's expand this view a little bit. We're really blowing out the nebula here. But you can see there's actually some dark nebulae that's visible here. And this is against the background of a little bit of hydrogen glow in this area. Some darker areas here so you can see some, some subtle, uh, kind of modeling of the background, which I think is really interesting. So I'm hoping to bring that out as well. Now I am shooting in Bordelmine, Chicago. It's extremely light polluted here, but what I'm able to do with these narrow band filters is filter out most of that light pollution and really focus on the light that's being emitted by some of these objects in space. One of the reasons it's classified here as an open cluster, NGC 7380. That's in fact the cluster of stars that's in the center here, and some of the very hot young stars there are sending out ultraviolet light. And that light is exciting, the molecular hydrogen that's in some of these surrounding areas, also some of the oxygen and the sulfur as well, and creating this emission nebula around this cluster of stars. So what I'm hoping to do with this framing of the object is not crop it down just to, to see the Wizard Nebula, I want to be able to see kind of where it is, sort of its position uh, relative to other things within the galaxy, within that dust and gas that makes up uh, the real star forming material uh, that's in the Milky Way. So this cluster is in the constellation of Cepheus, the king. Uh, as soon as the sky gets dark, uh, it is, gosh, about 60 degrees up in the sky, so a fantastic location there. Uh, it's transiting. Uh, at about 9.54 p.m. So it's actually a, a perfectly good time to be shooting it. I'm hoping for uh, maybe 10 hours total integration, fairly evenly split between the S, the H, and the O. All right, so the run has been started for a little bit here. I've settled in a bit, and now I'm ready to take a look. I've got blue stacks here running on my desktop. And I did take a few peeks at uh, some preview images just to make sure everything was guiding correctly and everything for this. But uh, yeah, here we can see we've got yeah, 25 seconds left on this exposure. Looks like it's actually already loading this stack of 18 
two minute images. So 36 minutes here on a live stack in the ASI Air. All right, here comes the image. Ah, excellent. This is looking really good. You can see you now the live stacking isn't always exactly what you're gonna get once you've stacked and of course processed your view. I'm gonna bring in the contrast here a little bit. This is looking nice. Yeah, plenty of signal obviously on the central part, but notice there's a little bit of lightness around it as well. We're actually getting uh, some of that background glow. That was something I was really hoping to capture. And you can even see a few darker areas around the nebula. That's uh, indicating that there's actually um, some dark nebulae there. I'm impressed that we're actually able to pick that up just with 36 minutes of integration, uh, hopefully with uh, several hours worth, uh, especially on that H-alpha. That's gonna be uh, pretty promising. So this is looking good. We'll see what the final image comes up with. Uh, you can see it in just a few seconds. So if you like this video and that you found it helpful, definitely give it a like, and uh, hopefully others will find it helpful as well. And of course, subscribe to Windy City Astrophotography. Clear skies, we'll see you next time.